G'day everyone, welcome to this week's Live on the Holes. I got my mate Jeff down this week and uh, fantastic to have some help and it's great to catch up. You know, we haven't seen each other for about six months with all the lockdowns that have been going on around the place and, uh, and everyone's free so he's down here helping me out. Going to be doing some work on how I'm going to drop the deck. That's so, so critical. It's uh, it's really been playing on my mind and, uh, and I'm basically going to be getting the stern bulkhead fabricated and in place, not so much tabbed in because I have to wait until I jack this deck back up again before I can get that in place permanently. So lots coming up, let's get into it. After about a six month hiatus, I finally got my mate Jeff back. He's come down from Canberra, they've let him out. I've given him a job and he's down here in the port cabin filleting and tabbing in a shelf. So every time I come down here, I'll put my hand on here and it gives way because it's just sitting there. I need it solid. That's it, now twist it. That's all way. All right, so we've got a cotton flock polyester resin mix going here and he's catalyzed at about 2%. We want to go off pretty quick. Now we're gonna put this shelf in. How's it, good to be back, mate? Oh, we haven't done much, have we? We've had about a three hour conversation, about 10 minutes of work so far. Well, the three hour conversation has been fantastic. It's we're in heaps. Up. That's it. Put in heaps because you're going to fill it out anyway. Oh, that's good. Jeez, I'm doing the bloody shotgun. That's all right. You wait, you see how neat you'll be able to get in a minute. Perfect. Good stuff. Yeah, you better do a good job because this is his cabin. <laughs> oh. I might just stick him in the engine room cabin and say, well, you're in there, just do an oil change, will you? <laughs> Actually, that engine room space is. Is all right. Yeah, actually, we've just decided that Jeff can fit in the engine room compartment. I may not be able to, so might need a chief engineer on board, I think. Got him in the sweat box. Only, it's only about 18 degrees. Oh, it's a beautiful cool day today. How yeah, was yesterday, mate? Yesterday was hot. You must oh, have been dying. It was 42 in here, in this room. I did a temperature check at about lunchtime. Wow. 42 degrees, because you're in a tent inside a room. This fan saved my life. I was in here for about three or four hours working on that new Acroprop system. I've got that Ross made Acroprop there. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't discussed yet, but that's coming up. That's my uh, my solution. It's going to be good though. Yeah, it'll work, yeah, for sure. Yeah. There we are. Now, it's a good idea when you catalyze your resin to let it sit for about 30, 40 seconds. Just let the, the cross-linking happen. All right, Dave, you're ready to go. He's got it. This guy's got the technique. He's in it. Don't run your brush through the fillet. God, do you know how good it is to have that shelf in? It's been giving me the shits for about a year. Well, when you grab it today, you'll just get stuck to it. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow will be good. Yeah. What I like about this finishing cloth, this is only about 100 grams. It's a biaxial, so it's 90 degrees and zero degree um, cloth orientation. But it's really super smooth, so it gives me a beautiful smooth finish. Okay. And just sort of dab it in place, but just run your run your brush lightly across it and it'll just conform to the shape. Just slide your brush like you're painting it. That's it. And see how nicely it goes down? Oh, that's this good. Typically what you'd make a surfboard out of. This stuff. Awesome. So we'll put two layers on each of that and that should be more than enough, including the fillet. That gives it all its its strength and really the heaviest weight that's going to have on it is probably someone's bag or a couple of blankets yeah just uh, just pleating that corner up in there is the key and now you've got four layers in the corner which is where it matters and that's going to be the the danger point for catch points yeah so that's all going to be sanded smooth but we're going to peel ply all this in a minute and then we're not even going to have to sand it we're just going to give it a light rub and then we'll flocate the whole cotton because i don't know how much that peel ply costs but it's like magic oh that is magic yeah it's funny because a lot of um, glasses won't use it because A, the cost, but B, they believe it's only a breather cloth for um, vacuum bagging because they actually use it as a separating line between the breather and the laminate. Oh, okay. And that's what it's designed for. But this is a secondary benefit is this lack of sanding you have to do at the other side, you know, and I've used it on everything and every one of these surfaces on bulkheads, roof is all, you know, not far from being fed. Well, not fed, but certainly smooth. Oh, well, the difference it makes 
like sand of that and then just peeling it off yep. and finish it leaves. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, it is an incredible bit of technology. I'd, I'd love to have something cheaper. A lot of people use well, greaseproof paper, like, you know, yeah. like, like oven paper. That sort of stuff will work. Until I saw it before you use it, I actually thought it was like a grease beef paper, not a cloth. Yeah, it's like a dacron sort of stuff. It's, it's polyester cloth. You could probably use anything. You probably cut up a couple of old dresses and do it. How yeah. you doing in here, mate? Pretty good? I'm, I'm learning. He's I'm... even done the underside. Oh, look at that. I think, I'm, I think I've done sort of okay. No, I think you've done a good job. That looks but, pretty um... good. That's... That's good. That's nice, smooth, non-squeaking shelves. Now, this is what this is all about. There's no squeaking shells in my boat. That's... No, no squeaking mattresses. <laughs> and no squeaking mattresses, no. I <laughs> well, hope not. All right, so we're cutting the tabbing. We need 1.5 or 1,500 millimetres long and 150 wide. And I've given Jeff the, the task. He's pretty good. You're a good seamstress, mate. Yeah, I can sew. I can cook. Can you? Can yeah. you cook as well? Yeah. Right on. One I thing can... I don't like doing is cooking. I can build shit. I love clean. doing stuff. That's good. Hey, he's done a good job. You make a tassel dress out of that. You'd wrap that around your waist and go to a luar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd make a nice dress. <laughs> 600 double buys. Might be a bit, bit scratchy. Be a bit, right? a bit, a bit, be a bit scratchy. Bit you don't have to wear your undies, mate, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have to double undie, I think. Oh. Be like wearing a tweed suit. <laughs> Remember the old tweed suits? How uncomfortable they would have been. Yeah, those poor old English guys wearing tweed suits. Are right, you ready for your next job? I am. What we're doing is we're we're um, tabbing the bottom of the stern bulkhead. Yep. Um, the one that you want to make sure is there. The engine. Yep. The one that I want to make sure stays is a massive bulkhead without a big bloody yep. hatch in it. A watertight bulkhead. Right. Watertight bulkhead. Let's so we're go. doing the bottom of that. Yep. Excellent. This should be fun. What we, how many layers? Three layers of quadraxial. Nah, double 600 bias. double bias. 600 yeah. double you should bias. know by now. I know. Jeff I like watches the, the channel. I like the sound of quadraxial. <laughs> Let's go. Get down there. 600 double bias. Get, going? get down in your hole. I'm going to follow you. Oh. We've given him a job down in this coffin down the back here. Now, you told me I can't spill any shit or make yeah. any mess. Why is that? <laughs> because... Because I did. <laughs> but as soon as you told me that, that means I'm going to. Yeah, yeah. I spilt um, four cups. One catalyzed and three non catalyzed of vinyl ester down into the engine room, and it was all down my t shirt, down into my shorts, and into my nether regions. <laughs> and I had to douse myself liberally in methylated spirits to remove it all. Um, I won't tell you whether I had to have a shave or not. <laughs> Mind you, I'll tell you when it grows back quick. <laughs> At the manscape a bit, but anyway, right out. You ready? I don't know. I can't grow anything up here. No. <laughs> Job is down in here. You're gonna tab the most important bulkhead of the whole boat. I reckon this one. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna stop the rudder from flooding the engine room or any untoward um, accident we may have into the future if we're reversing or get hit from behind. But yeah, anyway. So we've got vinyl ester and catalyzed at about one and a half, two percent. Go for it. So, you can see it's gone from purple to green. Right, as long as it's green, you can use it. <laughs> Get into it, mate. It's all yours. It's a nice little hole. Imagine working on the engine in here, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Try to keep everything above the, above the mask and tape so you don't spill it all over the module. It just dawned on me that I can actually check out the progress and supervise from above. Ah, oh, here he is. What are you doing down there, mate? Uh, this is final double cleaner. Oh, she stinks in there. I think the laminating was good for this last bit of peel ply. Yeah, that's all right. No way, mate. We're going to sand that down anyway. It's going to all get fed. Wow. It's pongy. <laughs> I don't know. I can't smell. Oh, mate, it is evil, that smell. I love the smell of vinyl. It's, it's going off. It's, it's, it's not as um, bad as the polyester because it's got less styrene in it. Yeah. It's actually a more compatible um, VOC, so it's a little bit less styrene, so it's, it's a little bit better for the environment, I guess. Don't worry about that too much, it's all going to get sanded and polished, as long as there's no drips. All right. Thanks, mate. Pleasure. Put him through his paces again. <laughs> all 
I thought while I was down here doing some other work, I'd go and check on Jeff's handiwork. He's not here today. He's uh, on holidays down here, and he comes down and graciously gives me a day's work. It's just unbelievable. What a great fella. I mean, I've known Jeff for a number of years. He's, uh, he's a mad kayaker with a paddle together. And uh, I'm just going to do a little check on how his workmanship paid off. And if it's no good, I'm not going to <laughs> But let's have a look. We'll get rid of this peel ply. Oh, it's all set up nice. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Good lad, Jeffrey. And uh, I'm going to peel it off. And... Oh, that's looking great. So it's nice. He's the sort of guy I can give quick instructions and he'll just get into it. There's a little bit there, but it needs to be sanded off. Oh, I think he's uh, done a green job for a newbie. Oh, that's absolutely perfect. So what we've got here is the stern bulkhead. This is H80 with uh, 300, 600 double bias, 300 CSM, 600 double bias on both sides. Now we've got three layers of 600 double bias tabbing on each side. This is like the the strongest bulkhead in the whole boat and a very important one because a lot of catamarans suffer from stress in this area here up in the chamfer panel because the the hulls are wanting to tear apart as the um, water moves through the boat and you get a lot of stress and tension in this area here there is still a bulkhead to go right across to the other side and meet up with the other side but now for now we've got a really good solid bulkhead this is actually going to form the access into our rudder uh, mechanism there's going to be some type of a waterproof hatch here because if I ever break a rudder off I do not want water flooding into this engine room and uh, yeah there's a lot of work to be done in here now but now I've got this in place and it's solid and Jeff's done a fine job here I'm pretty happy this is going to be quite a nice um, you know, transition to this engine module it'll all be painted nice and white with flow coat and ultimately uh, it looked like it was all one piece. Going back a few months ago, uh, it was about October or so, and we're sort of in mid-January on the video series at the moment, uh, we had a bit of an issue when we decided to drop the deck, remembering I've got it floating 50 centimetres above the hull and as we started to drop it, it drifted about a foot. I've got to come up with a way that is going to keep it stable as it lowers and that's doing my head in and uh, I've come up with a number of different ideas, possibly some tie rods on the side to maintain the stability of the actual deck as it drops down so that it doesn't waft either side. Remembering I've only got it on four bottle jacks. I can't really manage any more than that. And the day that we drop it, we're going to have probably four or five of us in here running around and trying to drop it. And we have around half an hour of working time. So that's going to be a huge issue. Um, essentially, the jack that's holding it here in each of the cabins is around about 70 centimeters long. So I've got an extra 20 centimeters of height that I can work with. The issue is going to be keeping it stable as we drop it and getting it back to the exact position that it is in now. So I set about modifying some acro props. I've got this wooden top on these uh, mini guided props and the idea is that this will slide in and out of the outer tube. They're like a mini acro prop. They're not there for support. They're purely a guide to make sure that this deck comes down exactly in the exact position that I want it to. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a fiddle. I'm going to have to mount it yeah, two of these in the forward staterooms against the forward bulkhead, as you can see here. And essentially, they're exactly the right height so that when it drops down, it will come down to the exact same position that it left from. Um, I, I basically just had to work out a way that I was able to mount them uh, so that they were in the right position. And, and there's a couple of things I did. I'll use shims and some pipe clamps to hold them in place. Absolutely essential that this is dead vertical because this whole boat's going to go straight up and straight down. It's going to go up 50 centimeters. Going to do all the work I need to do. And drop it straight back down. So what I have to do this acro prop or this small guide prop that I've built has to be dead vertical all the way around. And uh, I think I've achieved that. 
got it so close. A little bit at the top. That's looking pretty good. And that's looking really good. So I've made these chocks in the back here. Um, I'm going to need a little bit more thickness to pack it out. But what I will do is uh, I'll screw these ones into place where they need to be here and then uh, re-center this, put some packing in, and then I'll screw the clamps that I have, those pipe clamps around it to hold this base in place. The rest of it's free moving, so there's no uh, ambiguity there with the way it's going to be moved. It's very important that it sits right here because this is the only place I can actually glass it here without actually affecting the movement of the deck and not contaminating my bulkheads that I want to get nice and solid. So I'll be able to glass it basically just around here and here, just enough to hold it in place uh, to give it enough bite so that I can get that up and down perfect movement and a very quick drop, which is what I'm going to be after because I'm only going to have around half an hour of working time once we start applying the epoxy. Uh, so I'm still working on my jack system and as I said, I've got to keep it dead vertical. So what I've come up with is this acro prop here in the center of the doorway. It's a bastard of a position, but I've got to make sure that that's going to travel vertically. So what I've actually done, so I've just put a very, very simple um, couple of bits of MDF just to mark the footprint of the acro prop. So we'll know it was actually moving rather than bolt that in. Um, the acro up here is actually bolted through the roof. And screwed down into the roof. Now I'm going to cut this whole roof out so I don't really care about these two holes. I'm going to avoid drilling holes through the bottom there, although I probably could put a bolt through there to hold that in place. But all of that is going to slide up and down that prop up to 50 centimeters high, and then I'll have my position back again. Now, down in here on these acros or these acro guides, I'm going to call them, uh, I've actually I've screwed that. Uh, 4B2 up into the deck itself with a couple of batten screws that I haven't protruded through the gel coat and then I've filled it with epoxy and then glued it and I'm hoping that's going to be enough just to drag that up with it and keep it nice and solid. I mean I think really I've got it under control now, I don't really see an issue anymore. I'm not going to bother glassing that on, I don't really think it's going to serve any extra purpose. That epoxy should be more than enough just to, to give it the lift that it needs and to keep it straight as it comes down. So I'm pretty much getting ready now to lift this tomorrow. I'm hoping I can get Janet and Jeff here. Uh, I've got to go and buy another jack, another scissor jack as I broke one the other day here. Um, and then I'm going to be able to get into the final lift to get ready for the drop. Before I lift this deck back up, and I've actually been making a lot of preparations with the acro props and my guides and everything, I have to sort of template a bulkhead underneath the back lamb suite of the catamaran, joining one side to the other. Although the back curve of the boat on the hull itself has 30 mil foam and multiple layers of glass, the plans call for a perfectly straight transverse bulkhead that goes straight across from one sugar scoop to the other. And uh, and templating is going to be difficult because it's an area that I simply can't fit in. Um, I'm gonna base it, I've actually got the measurement, but I'm gonna have to get in there with a hot glue gun and derive a small template where it cuts into the sugar scoop. And then I know it's 1.8 meters or so long, but I'm gonna actually get the end of it templated so that I know that I've got it fitting on one end and then it's going to join in the middle. Once I lift this up, I'll be able to have access in through over the back uh, of a ladder and certainly in underneath the back of the cockpit. So it's going to be a bit of fun and games and a lot of contortion to get in here because it's pretty small. So we're going to go down into the engine room all the way down into there but what I'm talking about is up in there and I'll just show you what I'm talking about here if I can get down in there. This is a stern bulkhead here and down where the engine room is but this is the area I'm talking about here. Now this circle here is only just big enough for me to get my chest in. Now my original intention was to send Janet up into here. Uh, she's been up here before, not, not uh, 
unfamiliar with this space, but I have to have a bulkhead across here that actually intersects and is glass to the underside of that lounger. Um, that also joins into here, so I'll be templating this area here all the way across to the other side. Okay, as you can see, it's not a great place to work, but I've got to get a template of this to go all the way to the other side, and the best way to do that is with MDF strips. There's no way I'm going to be able to get any a ticking stick or a, a chain jig or anything in here at, in this situation because I can barely fit. get all the way across there so I'm going to actually pick a midpoint and then try to trim the bulkhead uh, by eye from a distance. Very peculiar little area here so I'm just going to basically just make sure I get a pretty safe shape and do your best and bog the rest. That's my uh, because once the deck's lifted up I'll have access to the entire area but for now I've got to do this now I've worked out if I can get this template right I should be able to fit the bulkhead in here just it's only 40 centimetres wide and 1.8 long and it's exactly 1.8 wide here so I should be able to slide it in there and then slip it up in there and test it. At least I've got the option of doing that before I go lifting this up because I've got to make sure that that bulkhead is going to intersect with the lounge sweep. Here's my template. Oh, I've taken that step out. I haven't glassed it in yet, luckily, because it's given me a bit of breathing, uh, a bit of fresh air coming through, and also the ability to get the bulkhead in without having to muscle it through this rear cabin. But uh, I'm going to try to get it in there. I'm hoping it's going to fit. I'm not really convinced yet. I'm praying I can get it up underneath. If it jams, I'm screwed. It fits just. I don't have to modify it. Thank you. 
love it. I love it when a plan comes together. That's cool. I've got to say, I was skeptical as to whether I was going to get this bulkhead um, fitted before I lifted it up. It was always going to be a bit of a battle and I've been jammed in this cavity for about four hours and uh, I've got to say that it's as close to perfect as I could ever ask for. This is going to really make a big difference to the strength of the rear part of this boat and I'll just take you up here and have a look. And that is it. And uh, that'll be epoxy glued onto there and tabbed and sink all the way across and then up underneath there through some hatches in the back of this lounger. But yeah, that's that's brilliant. I've got it fitting spot on and I know that the deck will shut down correctly with that bulkhead in place. And uh, what I'm gonna do with this cavity here, I'll probably end up putting a wall across here and filling in that roof section there so that um, nothing from there can fall down into the engine room. We don't want that happening. Uh, and then this could be additional storage here. If I have a wall there, I could actually fit a hot water system in here, or who knows what else. 